Good morning, lads. Welcome to another episode of Fishing with Steve. We're in the car, we're loaded up. It's just gone ten past five in the morning, and uh, yeah, heading out for the second pike session of the season. One well, I'm very excited about heading to a brand new lake I haven't fished before in Mead, and uh, yeah, excited about this one because there is pike reported in this place up to thirty pound. Uh, fingers crossed that isn't a lot of crap, and they actually are in there. I mean, we hit a few big girls this morning. Only way to find out is get on the road, get to the lake, get set up and get them rods out before sunrise. See you on the bank. Oh, beautiful. Well, that's we're out and we are fishing. Brand new lake, second pike session of the season. And looking forward to this one. So the lake we're on today is in Mead. It's probably about 30, 35 acres. Um, with depths down to 40 feet in some spots. Fairly deep just at the edge here. So I'm fishing in the corner just off the car park. It's a fairly handy swim. Uh, as I get a bit of a ramp down onto the lake. Uh, yeah, left hand rod is out within casting distance, probably about six, seven wraps. Um, we're already, and that's in 14 foot of water. Um, so fairly deep, close in. And then the right hand rod, I've gone, pushed that a little bit further out. I'm gonna start that about 200 feet out, uh, bring it in gradually during the day. That's in uh, deeper water, about 20, 21 foot. Yeah, we'll see how we get on. Really looking forward to this one. I read about this lake online. I've uh, been trying to get information on it. It says there's pipe to 30 pound on it. I don't know. There might be a couple of big girls in here, but, uh, Used to be a trout fishery and, and now it's a, a coarse fishery. Right, right, we'll see how we get on. I'll keep you posted. Well, that's just come up to half past 12 and we're yet to, to have a bite. Um, just did a quick check on, I had the the Western escape camp on the water camera, just on the left hand rod. Just did a quick, uh, had a quick look at that. I was in about 14, 15 foot of water. Um, fairly dark down there. Visibility isn't great on this lake um, compared to other ones that I fished around the area. But a uh, lot of green algae in it. So that's given a, a bit of a, a bit of a block in the light a bit getting through to the camera but yeah we'll have uh, I did manage to pick up though a couple of pike swimming by the baits uh, I was on lamprey on that one and a couple of pike swimming by the baits a um, lot of debris down there a lot of silt so I think my bait may be covered so what I did was I just popped up a piece of lamprey uh, a little bit a little bit of a poly ball and popped it up probably about you know six seven inches off the bottom just to keep me clear of that debris on the bottom lots of uh, lots of twigs lots of silt as i said and dead leaves and stuff which is not to be surprised because we're in the middle of a kind of a, a woods so a little earlier on i did take in the right hand rod that was fishing on the bottom on smelt and swapped over to a float rod and was fishing that probably about three four foot under underneath the surface and um, there was a lot of bait fish topping and a couple of small jacks uh, seemed to be hitting them over on kind of the far right hand corner so I uh, stuck the bait boat, got the bait boat, stuck the float on and bait boated the, the float out to that to that area but no, didn't get any takes not too happy with the western cam uh, for dead baiting to be honest with you it's it's probably a great 
great camera for, for lure fishing, for trawling, but for dead baiting, um, it's nowhere near how good the, the water wolf was. Uh, water wolf always kind of righted itself, it was always, it always came down on, on the right angle. Um, whereas the escape cam, it can end up anywhere. Um, it seems to be kind of uh, top heavy or lens heavy because the lens keeps digging down into the silt and then, um, yeah, it won't sit right, it'll either sit left or right, like even the, the, the footage I got of the pike was totally on the side because of the way the camera was. Being a, I couldn't cast down the left hand side, um, down there's like a, like a trench, uh, kind of a ridge, uh, right the way along the side of a drop off and I wanted to fish along the top of there and I haven't been able to do that because two guys turned up and they're uh, fishing their feet are fishing so they've kind of cut me off on the left hand side and that way so I'm kind of just more out in front of me and out in about 14 foot of water as I said so we'll see uh, we'll see how we get on I'll keep it going and uh, I'm probably going to give it till dark here anyway it's always hard to, to get to, to know a new lake and get the grips in the new league, so hopefully you might get a take or two. It'd be great if we did. Seen a couple of pheasants as well. Freaking the life out of me, I didn't know what it was coming through the coming through the reeds, but yeah, a couple of pheasants. So that's just coming up on three o'clock. And uh, another update for you. Well not much of an update really, because we haven't had a tap. Um hard fishing here today. The wind has just picked up, it's blowing easterly straight into my face, and uh, it's a cold one. Just swapped over the right hand rod onto a float fishing at about six foot deep with the most smelliest bait I've ever come across and I've ever used. I got this from uh, Sports Fins, formerly Luke and Rod and Tackle. It absolutely stinks. It's flavoured mackerel. I don't know what flavouring you put on it, but it's the most foulest smelling stuff ever. I've no doubt it's going to be good for the pike, but it's not good for me. I opened the pack and the smell hit me straight away. I was like, <laughs> torn the stomach straight away. It's uh, it's not good for me anyway, but uh, hopefully it's good for the pike. So I've got the right hand rod on one of them smelly mackerels, and the uh, left hand rod is back on the deck on Lamprey. Well, that's, it's not looking good, is it? Just give the rod a little bit of a tweak there, a little bit of a little bit of a twitch to see if there's any pike sitting over them that might uh, entice them into giving them a bit of a strike. But nothing yet. <laughs> it's not looking good. Oh, I hate blanking on the fourth session on the lake. Anyway, what can you do? We'll. Uh, it's just coming up to 20 past six. It'll be dark by about seven o'clock. So probably about another 40 minutes or so before it gets dark. Have the head torch ready to go anyway. But um, yeah, I'm going to start packing down the shelter and uh, I'll be able to get the other stuff in then once we uh, once you have all that packed down. Oh, fingers crossed. Last minute run, last minute run. Well, lads, unfortunately it ended in a blank. Uh, no runs today. Absolutely dire day for fishing. I have no clue why the pike weren't, weren't picking up. Looking at the underwater footage, there was plenty of pike around earlier on in the day. Uh, they just weren't feeding or weren't on the feed or weren't interested in the baits. But that's fishing for you. Uh, nothing we can do. So yeah, um, nice little lake. It's all right. Just way, way too busy for me. Um, I don't think I'll be back. It's a bit one and done job on this lake. Uh, way too busy, too many people coming and going, and um, people walking in through your swim with kids, uh, you know, <clears throat> walking in around your equipment and your gear, people with dogs everywhere, dog shit everywhere because people aren't picking up after their dogs. And then, you know, we had incident this morning with a couple of lads, they turned up and, you know, it's a very big lake. They see them fishing in the corner and they decide the two of them are going to, you know, feed a fish across your, your left hand line. So that had to come out there and uh, just no common sense really. And then I got the, the lads packed up and left early. I got my left hand rod back into a nice little spot. Only just had it out. It was probably out about 20 minutes. And the guy turned up with his dog and decided to throw a stick and a ball across 
into the water so the dog can go in and jump across the whole swim together. So it's just, yeah, it's just, it's not my type of fishing and uh, that sort of stuff wrecks my head. It's just a, you know, a bit of common courtesy or, you know, um, and those people walking the dogs around lakes, please clean up after your dogs, will you? The amount of dog shit around here is unbelievable. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, not my type of lake, too many people. So yeah, there's hundreds of other lakes for me to choose from, hundreds of other lakes for me to try out, and uh, I'll not be disheartened. So until the next time, we've enjoyed the vlog, even though we did blank, although it's important to get those blanks out as well, just to let you know that it's not always successful, and uh, we're all human. But uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the vlog, do hit the like, hit the subscribe, and hit that bell to get the notifications when I next upload. And until then, if you're out in the bank and enjoying some fishing, Tight lines.